can you talk to these people or something? I'm not getting anywhere. Oh, what are those? Oh, well, it's cranberry juice, cran apple. Really? This is American Psycho, and it's still being watched today for a reason. Released in 2000, American Psycho is based on the controversial novel of the same name by Brett Easton Ellis. A dive into the narcissism, greed, and sociopathy present in 1980s yuppie culture, told from the perspective of Patrick Bateman in what would prove to be a breakout role for the then up-and-coming actor Christian Bale. It's a starkly naturalistic portrayal of what is essentially a psychopath. Bale is somehow able to seamlessly shift his performance from a charming, relaxed, and moderately self-obsessed stockbroker to a man in the throes of a violent and murderous rage in mere seconds, all while filtering these extremely nuanced emotions through a thin veil of uh, narcissistic insanity. I want to fit in. So how was Bale able to breathe life into a character this extreme and have him still be at least relatively believable to the audience watching all of the carnage unfold? Back in 91, there was quite a bit of controversy surrounding the release of this particular novel. Simon & Schuster dropped the novel from its catalog at the last minute due to critical reception, eventually landing in the hands of Vintage Publishing. And despite all of the commotion, this reception did not hurt the book's sales, and the media attention ignited a high-stakes bidding war for the option rights. The film adaptation of the novel also had a bit of a rocky start, maybe fittingly, due to the very same controversial subject matter. For instance, despite being director Mary Heron's first choice, Christian Bale was not originally attached to play Patrick Bateman in the film. It was Leonardo DiCaprio who was originally attached in the role. DiCaprio's casting, and Heron's subsequent displeasure over it, led to the director being let go and the studio beginning a courting of Oliver Stone to replace her. At the time of American Psycho's pre-production, Leonardo DiCaprio was looking for a role to follow his performance in James Cameron's Titanic, and wanted to do something to ensure that he wouldn't get pigeonholed into playing romantic leads. Word began to circulate that DiCaprio was attached to the controversial project, and as rumor has it, this allegedly prompted a conversation between DiCaprio and journalist Gloria Steinem at a Yankees game where she persuaded him to drop out of the film due to the portrayal of violence against women. With the majority of DiCaprio's fanbase at the time being younger women after the Titanic role, DiCaprio agreed with Steinem and decided to drop out of the project. So just like that, Christian Bale's back in. Which also meant that the film's original director would be back to helm once again. But the big hurdle remained of becoming this character for Christian Bale. Getting into that character, Patrick Bateman, was not an easy process either. And if you know anything about Christian Bale, some of this is going to come across as a bit obvious. When some actors get into shape for a role, it's to appear more physically intimidating on screen, with a character like Bateman, written as an indictment of the 80s version of what a perfect man should look like, his physical appearance was meant to be a walking satire of that culture, and to accurately portray this satire, Bale needed to adhere to a strict diet and workout regimen to maintain Bateman's meticulously crafted physique. Now, typically, you hire a trainer and you you do what anybody else does. But Patrick Bateman was written as having a very specific workout routine in the film, complete with an ice mask, jumping rope, and an absolutely absurd amount of crunches. Well, that's just exactly the workout regimen that Christian Bale stuck to for the duration of the film's production. He is what's known as a method actor. Method acting is an attempt to become the character that you are playing on screen or on stage, whether the cameras are or are not rolling, or whether there's butts in seats or not in seats. It was first conceptualized in the early 20th century by Russian theater practitioner Konstantin Stanislavski. Stanislavski's system is based entirely around an actor finding ways to experience parallel emotions to that of the characters they are portraying. Through these experiences, in theory, an actor can then exist in truth under the imaginary circumstances presented in their film or play. Since then, many instructors have extrapolated on Stanislavski's system. Lee Strasberg added more psychological elements to the system, Stella Adler's technique focuses more on the sociological elements of performance, and Sanford Meisner's approach is rooted in behavioral elements. All of them direct the performer toward the philosophy that acting is the reality of doing. Which is the reasoning why someone like Christian Bale might stick to the exact workout regimen of his fictional character Patrick Bateman. Christian Bale wants to be able to experience the sort of self-obsessed, compulsive behavior that comes with being Patrick Bateman. During Bateman's confession in the film, naturally, Christian Bale couldn't have shot someone and hit from the police to generate the experience. I killed Paul Allen with an axe in the face his body is dissolving in a bathtub in Hell's Kitchen. He did, however, utilize caffeine to stimulate his heart rate into one more akin to someone experiencing a heightened sense of distress by drinking a ton of espresso before the shoot. That kind of behavior is considered method. Just shut 
to kill a lot of people! Now, I want to be really clear about something. There are a lot of people who believe in this industry that method acting is absurd, actually makes things more difficult, doesn't lead most of the time to better performances, and can sometimes make film sets intolerable, even making other people uncomfortable to the point where it hinders their performances. For instance, it's widely known that Jim Carrey was an absolute nightmare on the set of Man on the Moon. He delayed shoots, refused to show up, relentlessly taunted Jerry Lawler, and would get into screaming matches with the director. Actions like these can create that needless tension on set and become more of an obstacle than a piece of productive performance. But in American Psycho, it seems to have been an example of it paying off. His performance is full of subtlety. Case in point, at around the 14 minute mark of the film, Patrick Bateman is at the dry cleaners trying to get the blood out of his sheets where he runs into a coworker who delays him. As he's leaving, he drops his facade in a split second and you see his face completely change as he walks out the door. These moments show an acute understanding of his character, but more importantly, an organic understanding of how his character would react. Within this tool set, observation becomes another tool that actors can keep in their belts when creating this character. Oftentimes, actors can hone in on small details that they observe in daily life and magnify them when bringing them into their work. In the case of American Psycho, Christian Bale studied an interview that David Letterman conducted with Tom Cruise. Bale said that Tom Cruise's overt friendliness and enthusiasm, paired with having almost nothing behind his eyes, was an energy that really resonated with him, and by tapping into that moment, that conversation, he was able to do a lot more with his character. A character that Christian Bale refused to drop even after the cameras stopped rolling on set. And when this all synergizes properly, it becomes remarkable, even for the people around him. Multiple cast and crew members have said that Bale could make himself sweat on command during the fabled business card scene. And it wasn't a fluke either. Christian Bale was able to burst into perspiration at the exact time during every single take, every single time. This seemingly bionic ability to control an involuntary bodily function was a direct reaction to how deeply Bale had immersed himself in the character and the moment that Patrick Bateman found himself in. Cast and crew members would say it would seem that he was having a serious physical reaction every time the business card was trumped in the scene. And none of this works without smart, actoral decision-making skills. That's all acting is, right? Second to second decision-making, creating a character on the fly, like in the impromptu dancing during the scene in which Bateman murders Paul Allen to Huey Lewis in the news, all of that being completely improvised on the spot by Christian Bale. And ironically, one of the most iconic scenes in the entire film. The moonwalking, the shoulder dips, all of this delightfully macabre whimsy Bale decides to bring to the scene, heightening the terror, all improv, all in the moment. Now, while this all might sound like an advertisement or infomercial for method acting, it's not. It is worth pointing out that American Psycho is not the classic it is today, it's not even talked about today without Christian Bale's performance. And it's worth pointing out that how he got there was, well, through method. But that's not really the point. You could write this same piece about a litany of Christian Bale's roles. Instead, what I think is so interesting about Bale, American Psycho, method acting, is despite whether or not you agree with the technique, despite whether or not it works, and it clearly does at times and does in others, one thing that is true objectively is that it requires a level of commitment to your craft, to your art, and to the moment that is not just admirable, but sometimes seemingly impossible to achieve. Well guys, that's it for today's episode of Nostalgic. If you enjoyed this one, press the like button down below. If you haven't yet done so, also hit subscribe. That way you won't miss anything on the channel. And hopefully, two videos on your screen, you can click on either of those. Stay right here. And uh, yeah, see you guys in the next one.